Welcome back everyone. This is video three covering chapter four, section three of your operating systems textbook. Section 4.3 is about multi-core and multi-threading approaches and we'll take a look at performance effects, applications that benefit from multi-core and multi-threading, and take a look at an example using Valve game software. Now to understand the next two slides, please take a look at Appendix E of your textbook and read up on Amdahl's Law. Now that's what this graph is showing with the <coughs> with a multiple processors along the x-axis and the relative speed up along the y-axis. What we're looking at here is the percentage of code that is inherently serial. This is code that simply cannot be parallelized. And we're also assuming for this particular graph that we're looking at a situation where we don't have to worry about overhead as far as cache coherence and communication, cost of communication between multiple processes or threads. So what this shows us is that with eight processors and infinitely parallelizable code, nothing that has to run serially, we can get a one-to-one -one speed up. We can actually get eight times the performance out of the uh, eight processors that we've shown here. But something to keep in mind and something that Amdahl's Law will show us is that with just a fairly small amount of inherently serial code, code that can only be run sequentially, we start to get some major drops in our speed up uh, from some fairly small amounts of inherently serial code. So if we take a look at the 10% line at the bottom, we see that with just 10% of inherently serial code, our eight processor system yields a performance gain of only 4.7. Now, this graph shows us our speed up with those overheads that I mentioned in the last slide taken into account. So if we're going to account for inner process and inner thread communication, if we're going to account for cache coherence overhead, we see that our improvement gets a whole lot worse than if we assume infinite parallelizability. Uh, something else to keep in mind uh, that's shown in this graph is that we can actually get to the point where we parallelize an application to the point where we get diminishing returns. So this particular graph shows that we get our best speed up between four to five processors, but going all the way to eight processors might actually give us less performance than less parallelization. Now, software engineers have been addressing this problem, and there are numerous applications in which it's possible to effectively exploit a multi-core system. One example of this is with database applications in which great attention is paid to reducing the serial fraction within hardware architectures, OS's, middleware, and the database application software. This figure shows the results of that. As this example shows, database management systems and database applications are one area in which multi-core systems can be used effectively to reduce runtimes. Many kinds of servers can also effectively use parallel multi-core organization because servers typically handle numerous relatively independent transactions in parallel. So applications that benefit from multi-core and multi-threaded approaches are multi-threaded native applications, which are characterized by having a small number of highly threaded processes, multi-process applications, characterized by the presence of many single threaded processes, uh, Java, <clears throat> applications actually embrace threading in a very fundamental way. The Java language greatly facilitates multi-threaded applications, and the Java virtual machine is a multi-threaded process that provides scheduling and memory management for Java applications. Finally, multi-instance applications, in which we have multiple instances of the application itself running in parallel. So we actually have many, many instances of the entire application running in a parallel way. Now, Valve Software has done some very, very interesting things in the development of various popular games, as well as the Source Engine, which is the animation engine used for its games, and it's also licensed by other game developers. Uh, the explanation of how this whole thing works appears on pages 169 and 170 of your textbook. I would definitely recommend to take a look and read through that section of the book. This will give you a great example of how these concepts can be applied in a real-world way. Well, that does it for Chapter 4, Section 3 
Our next video will be the last from Chapter 4, and we'll cover Section 4.6 on tasks and threads, specifically in Linux.